showing you how to paint uh, Elder in this painting tutorial and I've chosen uh, Rafe Guard or Rafe Blades as the name for them is when they're using close combat weapons. So uh, this is the figure I'm going to be painting I'm going to show you all the stages uh, of how to paint it. So before we start the figure's just been uh, cleaned up, uh, glued together and then the figure has been based and then I've sprayed the entire thing in the uh, dark grey spray that I use so uh, just to let you know what it is again it's the Montana gold spray and the colour is uh, stealth uh, so it's Montana gold the kind of place where you buy this from you can get them on eBay um, often or sometimes they change the names around so it might not be called stealth anymore but it's this kind of dark grey colour uh, there's a code there it's 7070 uh, on the can. Uh, they supply these really for people into graffiti art. So that's the kind of websites that you'll buy them from. You just have to look around, perhaps search on Google and it'll tell you the places that stock them. But it's Montana sprays that I use and it gives me that nice dark grey colour. It's an acrylic spray so it's, it's good for spraying onto plastic. I would say that if you're going to spray it onto metal, uh, I would use uh, a, a Games Workshop spray first. Uh, a white or a or a black, depending on what you want to do. Uh, spray that onto the metal first, because the Games Workshop sprays do uh, sit well on metals, and then spray your grey on top of that. And I have found that if you spray this grey straight on top of metal, it can uh, sort of chip uh, quite badly. And uh, it will chip, and like a, a, a whole chunk will come off, as opposed to a Games Workshop spray where and that's not as bad. So I use the Games Workshop spray as the, the initial colour and then this grey on top. Now this this has saved you loads of time. Uh, the figure is that nice grey, dark grey colour and you'll see how helpful that is as we build the colours up. And then the base uh, has been done in the dark grey. That's, that's already at the nice shade that we want to start off with and then the rim is done for you as well. So just by doing that grey you're going to save yourself a whole load of time. Right, the figure has been magnetised, just that I want to have both options available for these Rafe blades. Uh, so, you'll see here that the sword has been magnetised just at the wrist joint there. I've just bought in a little uh, two by one magnet just into the hand there, and super glued it in. And then drilled out into the actual arm as well, just there, so that's where the two connecting points are. And that's strong enough to hold that weapon in place. And on the other side, um, actually the whole arm comes off. And in there is a 0.5 thickness, it's very thin, and then 4mm wide, and it's the same on the other arm. And those two go together nice and thin, so you can hardly see the joins. And that works out really well. Gives you a bit of movement with the joint as well, so you can mix the poses up. You can move the arms around to some degree as well which is nice and that gives me the option of adding in the axe and the uh, shield there and then again that's good looking what we're going to do uh, for the sake of time I'm not going to paint these options they can be painted another time uh, we're just going to paint the two swords that's the two options this is the option I'm probably going to go for in games to start off with and then later on if I change my mind I can paint the rest but it's the two swords we're going to paint, uh, which is handy because you'll be able to see how I paint weapons for the old are as well. There is a technique to doing those. It's just another note on uh, spraying a figure. Sometimes you don't want the whole thing grey. You've got another colour to paint, uh, but you still want to keep the grey base. There's there's two things that I do. I'll show you the first option. And, um, here's an Imperial Fist here. It's no, no good me spraying in grey uh, and then trying to have to build up that yellow colour. So what I do is uh, just, I construct the figure, I stick him on the base but I just glue one foot down and just only a little dab of glue and it just holds the figure in place whilst I build it up and whilst I do the basing and then once the basing's dry I just snap the figure off and it just snaps off at the base of the foot and then it, it leaves the imprint there for me to stick him on later on uh, and you can always sort of number the base and the feet so that you know which figures are which if you've got a batch of them going on and then uh, I then took this figure away separately, sprayed it white, and then sprayed it yellow. 
and that gives you my base color and that will save loads of time I can go straight on with the uh, other colors and that will save time and I can, I can apply washes directly to this color and once that's sprayed and dried then just simply glue it back onto its base the, I spray the base separately in the gray then you've got your key uh, your starting colour for the base and the rim done and then your main colour for the figure as well again saves you loads of time and it's nice and neat all the feet are nicely done so that's one option you can do and I'll do that uh, especially if it's a brighter colour and the other option uh, if the figure doesn't come off perhaps uh, or it's a colour that's close to the grey like this uh, uh, Terminator Chaplin here I just spray the base grey first all the way around and then once it's dry I cover it up with tissue as best I can and as tight as I can to the ground and then spray my colour over the top and then uh, most of that figure is now done in the Games Workshop's Chaos Black Spray and then I'll just later on paint the over the grey here on the feet in black and then that figure is ready to go. Just simple tips there for spraying. Uh, I use, try and use spraying just to save time and uh, it does help, gives you a good start with the figures that you're working on. So uh, for the actual basing that I use, this grey is sort of the general basing colour scheme and style that I use for all of my uh, 40k figures. Uh, so uh, you can, if it's a larger base, sometimes uh, the glue will come off of the base. So you can give it just a little bit of a sanding down to start off with and that helps the glue to stick. And then the glue that I use for the basing is PVA glue. Uh, now you can get wood glue, uh, but that dries and it can be quite brittle. You don't want that. So it must be PVA glue that's got a little bit of flex in it. Um, and that's good for sticking down basing material. So PVA glue. Uh, if you've got a feature on a base that you want to remain in place, because um, PVA takes a long time to dry. This orc head, I worked on that, cut it how I wanted it, and then actually glued that in place with super glue. I used a bit of activators that it was instantly stuck there as long as this as well as this plate here on the back and then applied the PVA glue on top and then as I worked on it these pieces stayed in place and didn't move around as I was doing the rest of the base. So you can use super glue to fix certain parts onto the base. So then you take your PVA glue and then just take an old an old brush and, and then I just smear the glue around nice and neat up to the feet all over the base, quite thick, not too much. And then uh, once that's done, I use, I sprinkle some uh, Games Workshop, the old Games Workshop basing kit that used to give you this kind of slate stuff. I'm sure you better pick it up from somewhere else, builders, merchants, or uh, garden centres perhaps, uh, or if there's a beach near you or something. You can uh, just choose the, the stones and textures that you want, but I like this style, so I uh, sprinkle some of those onto the PVA to start off with and then after that uh, immediately then put it into my tub of sand and it's just got regular sand there plus some stones and gravel and bits and I just put that in flick the sand over the top and then just bash off the spare and then leave it to dry uh, and that gives me my, that nice effect there on the base that's the uh, basing style done Right, here's the paints you'll need to uh, for this Eldar uh, painting tutorial. Uh, so to start off, we've just on the top left-hand corner, you've got the new Abaddon Black. That's formerly Chaos Black. Uh, then Ceramite White, which is the old Skull White. And then there I've got the old Codex Grey, which is now called Dawnstone. And then uh, the Turquoise is used to be called Hawk Turquoise. And now it's called Sotec Green. Right, now the old red gore is uh, now called Wazdaka Red. And then I've got there the old Blood Red, which is now called Evil Sun Scarlet. And then uh, the old Blazing Orange, which is now called Troll Slayer Orange. Then just in the front row, just some metallics on the bottom left. Uh, you've got Hashak Copper, that's the new colour. That's the old Dwarf Bronze. And then you've got uh, the new colour there, Iron Breaker. And that is formerly uh, Chainmail. And then uh, just there I've got the old Mithril Silver. And that's now been renamed Rune Fang Steel. And then for washes, just two washes for this project. Uh, Seraphim Serpia, which is the old Griffon Serpia. 
And then finally, the bottom right hand corner uh, is Drakenhof Nightshade, and that used to be called Ashman Blue. That's all the colours that you need, not too many, that's the good thing about this colour scheme. Uh, just a handful of paints, you better get the nice results you're looking for. Right, so we're going to move on to our first colour. Uh, so I take Codex Grey and then just take a just a wash brush. You can use something a bit smaller if you want to. We're just looking to paint. I'm just going to remove the weapons here just for to make the whole thing easier. Um, so I've got my tissue here or you can use a palette. I'm going to use a tissue because I want to control the amount of paint on the brush. I've got the old Codex Grey and then I just put some on the brush, make sure the brush is covered but I don't want a whole load on the brush and then I just start highlighting the base you want a good coverage, you want to flick it over, you want to sort of work it in uh, but because there's not a load of paint on the brush uh, you're not filling in the gaps, it's just giving a nice coverage uh, to the base there, it's starting to run out of paint so you can just work it into the tissue and that just takes the excess off and then I can just work it in to the figure if you go over the rim just wet your finger and then rub the paint off you just want to, I don't want to repaint, I never repaint the rims I just keep it clean and you don't have to do that again that's time that's been saved and I'm happy with that grey now that's done so, nice and quick. Uh, didn't really need to wash the brush out there, I'll tell you why. White is your next colour. Uh, now with that, don't do what I did just here. Keep that, keep that grey on the brush. And then go straight to white, dip into the white. And then work that in. Because you don't want straight white, you want a, a light, a very light grey. So that'll do fine. And you want to take a bit more paint off this time. And then you're looking to just more of a flick over the top this time. Not as strong. Still want good coverage, but you're not working it in as much this time on the figure. That's coming out quite nice. That's looking good. And then just run around. Looks good, and going up to the edge there. So that's your highlighting done, two stages. Makes a difference, you need to do that grey first. If you go straight on with white, it looks just it doesn't look good, it doesn't look faded. So it's grey first and then white, and that's done. Right, once that's dry on the base, you want to take Seraphim Serpia, and usually I'll take a, a smaller brush, base coat brush will do fine. And then you're just looking for effect now. Because um, it's urban, sort of abandoned city theme here. Uh, so you've got the rubble on the ground. But I don't want just plain grey. I want to make it a little bit more organic, a bit more dirty. So um, I'm just adding in some wash here. And just, just putting it in sort of puddles, working it around the base. And that just makes it... Uh, it just keys the base in just nice, brings another colour in. Make sure I get it around the feet. On the feet, uh, shaded in there. It creates a little bit of shadow for the figure. And then uh, that's about it. You can see the the um, effect on the base there. Really, that's your base and done. All I do at the end is just apply. Uh, once that's totally dry, apply some PVA over the top. And then put your desired flock. Uh, on top of the base and that is it the basing is finished so I want to show you a general tip uh, people have been asking me uh, how do you know when uh, or people have been asking me that you know why do you use paint straight from the pot how do you know if it's thick enough or too thin so we'll share that with you uh, so we've got this snot green here. I haven't used it for quite a while and I, I know that the paint in there isn't very uh, Thin at the moment. I could use it, but it's it's quite thick. So there's two things 
Uh, I'm going to add some water in here. I'll just put my finger in the water and then just drip it in just to control the amount. You can pour, but you've got to be careful you don't put too much in. And then we just keep that flowing in. There's a fair bit of water in there now. Close it up and listen to it. Now I can't hear that liquid in there, so I know that's not thin enough. And then when you open it up, it's flowing, sort of flowing down, but very slowly. So I know that that's not thick enough, uh, not thin enough. So I'm going to add some more water to that. And that'll do. Close it up and listen. Now you can hear the liquid starting to move. That's a good sign. So I'm going to open it now and see, just watch and see how the paint flows out of that lid. Still quite slow. I can tell that paint's improving though. So I'm only going to add a bit more now. Because I think we're in a good shape. Close it up. Listen. There. It's got that liquid feel to it. I can hear it. It sounds good. Now when I open it, the paint's got a nice flow to it. It's flowing out of the, you'll see it flow out of the lid and back into the pot and you can tell that paint's in good condition. Um, and all you have to do really, uh, to know whether you're uh, doing it right or not, is just to get a new pot of paint and listen to that. And that will tell you that you should keep your paint at the consistency that it was uh, when you bought it. So listen to a new pot. And you'll soon hear it. Listen to this black here. That's the kind of sound uh, that you want. I can hear that, so that's at a good consistency. You're going to have to keep maintaining your paints. They do start to dry up. Uh, if you keep the water in them, topping them up, then uh, they'll stay in good condition. But that's just a general tip for paint maintenance. And then if your paint's at a nice flow, then you can then use your paints directly from the pot. Just that you'll save paint because if you're taking paint out of a pot and then transferring it over onto a palette then you're going to be wasting paint as it dries on that palette. So I find that your paints will last longer as well. But it's just known getting that right consistency. If your paint is the wrong consistency, if it's too thick, that when you go to paint detail you'll really struggle with a blob and it won't flow properly and you'll make a mess. You've got to have nice flowing paint and that will I uh, mean you can paint uh, cleaner, straighter and, and more accurately. Right, so you're onto base colours now, stage one. You want to get your main colours onto the figure uh, and then you're ready for the, the stages after that. So I've got my uh, skull white or ceramite white as it's called now. And you want to take um, quite a large brush, you're not worrying too much about neatness. I've got a base coat brush here. Uh, there's an important point the the helmet here is white and I want to paint it paint the white on um, this ceramite white has got a nice coverage on it and the key is to keep the paint thin this paint I've made sure that it's watered down not too thick the key is not to do a one thick layer the key is just to do a nice neat layer and you'll see that it's Covering the figure well, but not entirely, and that doesn't matter at this stage. And then under the rim of the helmet, you're not going to see that under there, so I'm not going to worry about that. But you will see uh, just under the rim of the helmet there. So I'm just going to run the white paint in there. And then just around the back of the helmet there, and then under the rim there. Now the the key point for this is to your brush strokes need to be nice and long and neat and then you want to look out look you might be able to see that there there is a fleck of dry paint in the white I want to keep that off look, keep a look out for those any lumps to get them removed so that it's a nice smooth finish don't worry about any coverage it's just about smoothness is key and then this crest at the top I do white for this color scheme as well so just fill that in make sure I get all the edges make sure 
I catch a gap here. Don't want to miss any part of it. Looking good. Working fast. Look, I've got it here and there. I've flicked in the wrong spot. Doesn't matter at this stage. And the only other white part is the cloak bit that dangles down. So I'm just working it into the figure there. I've got it. I've flicked it here and there, but it doesn't matter really. So it looks good. And then just behind the leg, I will need to move another colour. So you could spend 15 minutes getting it precisely right when there's actually no need at this stage. Better to spend just one minute getting the colour on that you want. That's the white done. Uh, there's no white for the arms to do, so that's your first colour finished. Right, next colour you want to do is the famous turquoise, the old hawk turquoise, or Sotek green as it is called now. Uh, again, maintaining the paints, keeping them a nice consistency. I'm going to use that same brush, uh, the base coat brush. And the only area that you really, really want to be neat on at this stage is around the feet. You don't want to get this um, turquoise onto the base that you've been working on. So I use my brush nice and neat around there looks good that foot's fine and I'm going to do the other foot no, I don't want to get it on the base so just neatly thankfully these are quite wide feet here so uh, that's fine It's good, so the feet are covered well, and then I just run the paint over the figure, um, filling in all the joints everywhere. You want all the joints filled at this stage. I don't want to get it on the white, so we're just going to neatly go around there. In here, black will be our need to colour later on. Again, look, not being very neat here. It's going on areas that will be black later on, but uh, speed is key. I just want to get a good coverage on the figure. So that's the chest done, and then up and around. See where the magnet is here? I'm just going to paint over that, make it part of the figure. Up under the chin, up the shoulders, along there. Now you're moving quickly, fast, and you're not worried if you're covering areas that will be another colour. That doesn't matter as long as you don't put a thick uh, paint mistake somewhere. This won't be a problem at all. It's easy, easily painted over later on. It's underneath the crest. Just keeping the camera on in here just so that you can see the speed of this initial coat. Uh, not a particularly neat brush this one, but it doesn't matter, I'm just, um, it's coverage is the key. There's no problem painting over the magnets at all. Got a little bit on the white there, doesn't matter at this stage. Just making sure it's coverage, you don't want to miss, part, miss a part, and you don't want to uh, miss, see, like this. I don't want I don't want grey parts shown through because I want it to be a sh shaded properly. So I make sure it's all filled in, and then just this leg here. And you see how well the turquoise goes onto that grey. I won't need to do a second coat. Grey is just a nice colour. Sort of if black, I reckon I would need to do another coat. White, I'd need to do multiple coats. But with this grey. You're looking at just one coat, and again, time saving. If you're in a rush for a tournament, spray it grey, base colours, do your base, flock the bases, and you've got an army done very, very fast. Um, and that might be what you're looking for if you're in a rush. Uh, and then you can always come back and, and work on the figures later on. Uh, but I'm just looking around, just going to get the neck just inside there. And just the knee joint up under here. I haven't got all of the 
leg filled in just under the chest just look over the figure checking for air mist areas because you don't want to miss it when it's too late after the shading has been done and I'm quite happy with that then for the sword it's just the hand that grips around again not worrying really if you make any mistakes but I'm just being neat this is generally neat there's no need to get paint everywhere so that's that one done and then for this one uh, it's just the whole arm and the hand again making sure I fill in all the gaps and over the top of the magnet as well I want to seal the magnet in to the figure it won't make any difference in the strength of the grip of the magnet up and around and in between the fingers um, that is it, nice and fast. That's your main colour is the turquoise, so that's your main colour. Base colour. Finished. And immediately your figure is starting to uh, take shape if only applied two colours. Right, so your turquoise is done. Uh, next colour you want to do, I would say it would be the black. So bad on black, the old, uh, that's the new colour. Chaos black's the old colour. Uh, you're going to swap brushes on this one because you want to save time. So what I do is take a base coat brush again. Although this brush I've got the, t the tip's not too good. I'm going to swap to my standard brush. It's just that it's in a better condition here. And you want to use this one neatly to paint your armoured plates one in between the legs here so paint the whole front of the plate and then paint the edge as well this is where you want a bit of neatness that looks good and then just there and just the inside of it there and then I'm going to paint this one, the two either side of the leg. Let's just paint the main plate over the top. And then neatly paint your edge as well. One edge, two edges. Three edges there, there. Just underneath. Around the back. And if you can, if it's visible, to see up underneath the plate. Then I just run the brush inside as well. It's not not essential. Um, I'm going to paint the other plate here. You'll see the resemblance here for these guys to the ray floods that I already have in my force, and that's deliberate. I want them to look like mini ray floods just to uh, terrify the opponent, thinking you've got mini ray floods running around the table. And so that's neat. I've covered the, the edges there, and the black's gone on nicely. So that's the three um, plates done, and then the shoulder pads are black as well. So just run that right up to the edge, run it underneath, make sure that's done, and then I run a bit of the brush up and inside there as well. But again, nice sized brush. Your coverage is quick and efficient. And again, you notice now that the black is going on to the grey very nicely. Only going to need one coat of that as well. So you're saving yourself a whole load of hassle. That's for sure. So underneath, because the arm's missing, I can fill in the hole underneath of that. Shoulder pad there. And then just over the top. So that's the, the two shoulder pads done. And then sticking with this large brush, the crest that sticks out the back. I want that totally black. All the way up to the edge there. And then just filling in. So that crest is uh, done in a 
nice fast time. Got a little bit of black on the turquoise, doesn't matter because I'm going to go over that again later on when we neaten it. So I'll just leave it. It's all about just saving yourself time. So, looking good with the black. Then wash the brush out. Uh, now I know this black here is a good consistency, so I'm going to use straight from the pot because I know it's got a nice flow to it. You've got to make sure it's a good flow here. Uh, so I'll take a, a detail brush, and this is where you're not looking to be neat. And the areas to be neat are just behind, this is sort of the inside part of the helmet here. Just up inside there. If you go back on the white again, don't worry, I've made a mistake on the white. It doesn't matter because I'll go over it again later. And then just up underneath uh, the helmet here. Now just stop with the black at the uh, ribbing that runs along the inside of the helmet there. That will be uh, a metallic colour later on. And then the other area you've got to be neat is the, the joints in the legs. Uh, where the, you'll see like a ribbed effect here where the legs, where the torso joins the legs. So I'll just fill that in with the black and also the back part of the plate just between the legs is black behind as well so just fill that in neatly that's fine and you can see the join here uh, the knee joint at the back I do that black as well And just on the other leg. If you slip and get it on the turquoise, just leave it because you can repair it later on. Unless it's unless it's in an area where shadings are going to go, in which case you will need to fill that in with turquoise again. Um, so that's those two parts done there. Uh, just looking around up in the waist, in between the armour, you'll see that needs to be filled in there. Coming around the arm joint. Fill that in. Fill in the arm joint there. Also fill in the gr the uh, these sort of air intake type things. I fill them in with uh, black there and there. Just make sure I get the brush in the cracks. I'll neaten that edge later on. Then also this crest in the middle of the chest. I just fill that all in with black. It's looking good. Just gonna wash the brush out. Lick it again, keep the paint at a nice tip. And then just go for the chest here. Uh, there's an armour plate right in the middle of the chest, I'm going to leave that turquoise and then just fill the rest in there and just in there so generally neat see I've got a few flicks on the on the chest, it doesn't matter because we're going to need them with the turquoise later on uh, joints on the legs filled in so I think for black that is it now your figure's really starting to take place that's a mini rainy floor what he looks like now so looking good and then on the arms I do do part of the sword in black it's the handle of the sword but not the the ribbed part that's going to be metallic later on so the, the handle of the sword I fill that in black and then also part of the uh, it sort of continues on onto the hand I'll make that black as well so we just fill that in Should I get all the angles? So the handle's done. That's it. That's your black finished for the figure. 
Next color I want to do is uh, silver. I'm using uh, chainmail here, uh, which is now called iron breaker. And just take some of that, and that's not for this figure. It's actually for the weapons, for the swords. And I just cover the whole of the blade. Uh, all up and around. See, so there's some detail there in the sword. Uh, I just fill that in with the silver. I want a nice clean coverage for the sword. Uh, just filling it in all the gaps. There. The sword looks good. And then just the back of the sword as well. What a nice even clean coverage. That's your sword done in that colour. Just done the second sword there. Uh, so that's done. Right, next colour that I do is the Hashak Copper, uh, which is the old dwarf bronze. Uh, there's a couple of parts to do. I'm going to use a detail brush and here I take some paint and then just put it on the palette and just give make sure my brush has got a no excess on it just nicely loaded. And I'm just going to run it over the top of this design that is on the chest. Run it over the top of that design without getting it in the crack and it picks out the design for me. Uh, and then along the back crest, there you'll see the r sort of rib effect I cover over the top and then I just poke the brush in the gaps there as well to fill that in. Uh, and then I do it on the other side. Same thing again, run it over the ribs and then just uh, fill in the gaps and then just at the back of the head filling in as I go along and then underneath here there's two little bits that stick out that can be made into the copper Just there you can see them underneath the figure those I do in copper uh, and then just looking around I do there's a grill here at the top of the head those grills I tend to paint in the copper as well so I just fill that in and make sure it's filled in all the way up to the edge again if I get some on the turquoise it doesn't matter I will just repair that later on as we neaten the figure up. So you're looking for a, a pretty fast application uh, at this stage. Now the central gem on the plate here has actually got a metallic rim to it. So what I do is I paint the entire thing this copper and that just means that I get I want all of that edge in that copper and what it also does for me is it when it dries I can see the shape of the gem on top of that and that means I can paint more accurately I can see what I'm doing and then uh, the what I paint here, the crest at the back, I neatly paint all of these. I'm not doing them as gems, I'm just painting, filling them out with the uh, copper. And just painting, trying to get both sides of the gem without touching the, the actual black. Just making sure I get the underside and the top side each of those and then there's a couple on top looks fine so that looks good and then just around 
the other side and paint them. So that's the the main figure done. Uh, really looking the part now. That metallic added in uh, just adds a nice dimension to the figure. And just coming over onto the swords, uh, I paint the. You see, there's a, a round gem there. I paint the whole thing over in the copper. Just avoiding the black, and then there's like a charger uh, type thing here on top of the sword. Where I actually cover that in the copper as well, just the whole thing in all of the gaps because you, you want the shading to take effect on the figure. And just spinning around, uh, just the whole thing, and then the gem. On the other side, wanting to be neat at this stage. There we are. And then the ribbed grip on the sword. I'm going to fill that in with the copper as well. Being neat, I don't want to run over the black, I don't have to redo the black again. So there it is. And uh, that's the colours there. So, really making good progress. At this stage, well, all you've got left to do is one colour, and uh, for that I use the you know, new Wazdaka red, um, and that's for gems. Any gems on the figure will be covered in this Wazdaka red. The whole thing, just fill it in neatly. That should leave you with a red gem, surrounded by the copper uh, rim to it. That's all ready to be shaded with the inks. So nice and neat job. And that picks out that detail on there. Just doing the other sword. Now you can add as many gems as you want across the figure. There's plenty of lumps, uh, like sort of bits on the figure that you can add. You can paint red and make extra gems. I'm trying not to make loads of work for myself. And I used to overdo it and it didn't look right. So less seems to be better with these. So that really it's just this central gem in the middle of this armoured plate. I'm just giving it a coat of this red. That looks good. And that's that figure. Red. Each colour complements the other, I think. Just a little bit of red in there adds an extra dimension. Now really, if you uh, stick your magnets on, stick your Weapons on that figure's ready to go. If you're playing in a game, uh, then the, the colour scheme alone, I think, makes the figure look nice. And it's looking good. But that's just stage one. All your base colours are done. The figure's looking good. Base is uh, almost finished as well. So that's game game ready. And that's, you're going to paint a force very, very quickly using that technique. So we're going to move on now to the next stage. And that's washes. We're going to show you how to do the wash on stage three. Right, so the next stage is washes. Uh, we're going to try and take this figure to the next level. As I said, you can be satisfied with that. Uh, and you'll have a force painted for games very, very quick. Uh, as I've shown you, it's pretty quick going. So, but we're going to take it to the next stage now. If you want to move into more detail and make the figures look more striking or stunning. And I do think that if you paint figures well, you choose a good colour scheme, making them look intimidating. I think that has a, a psychological impact in the game. Just my personal opinion. But I think it does work. I'm actually going to use my standard brush. This has got a nicer point to it. A little bit thinner and it's got some control. Um, so, for white, I don't want to coat all of the white in it. Just wherever there's a join and wherever shade's going to be. And I will put this wash on. So it's just there and there on the figure. And then again, for the helmet, I'm just showing you here. Underneath the neck, underneath the helmet. I'm not touching the head. I'll just keep it at that white. And then just fill in around the head at the joins here. At the join on top. Underneath. Got it some on the helmet there. I'm just removing it. I want to keep that helmet clean. There. And then now I'm shading. You see the two uh, 
little blobs there. I'm filling them in on both sides. So I want them shaded, not too much, not too little. And then in between the crest here, I want shaded as well. And then just keeping the rest nice and neat. Uh, the black crest, yes, we're going to fill in. And that's the big advantage of the Eldar colour scheme. It's the same wash for the entire figure. Going to save yourself loads of time. But just to give it that strange sort of alien effect, I'm just going to let that wash flow into the copper as well. And that just gives it that sort of blue tinge to it, which is sort of the effect, sort of the alien effect that I'm looking for for Eldar. Anyway, so I'm just running the wash all the way through. Uh, the figure is going on quite nicely, uh, just keeping it away from the helmet. And then just making sure that that shading is filled in across the figure. Any panels where it's not going to be shaded, just don't bother running the paint over the top. Um, and then also for the gems as well, they all get the shading added on. So as you can see, it's fast going. I don't want to let it form big deep puddles because with the turquoise repairing later on I only want to do sort of one coat to repair it and if you do thick thick shading you might have to do multiple coats uh, to build it back up so I'm just trying to be wise where I put this. Around the torso here as well, around the legs and the joints just to reinforce the black and just to if you've missed a tiny bit of the black, then the shading will at least shade it for you as well. Coming up around the feet. I'm making sure that these uh, circles here are receiving the right amount of wash. And then the feet all the way around the rims, toes, joints here, the knee joint. Sure it's filled in and then these blobs just around the top of the leg. Just keeping an eye on the, the flow coming in. And that's uh, shading up pretty nice. Looks good, looks good. Bottom of the foot is coming up. Anywhere where you've seen you've missed later on, just fill it in. Uh, often you will miss bits. I do, and then uh, just around here, filling it in, and you see it's sort of adding a sort of a depth to the figure uh, shading. So I think that's it really. Looking good. Just quick. You can see the shading on the figure. Looks all right. It's not too neat, but it, it, it adds nice dimension to the figure. And then for this, uh, I'm just going to cover the arm here. Now, I put a lot of wash on that arm, and it's puddling. So I'm just going to keep spreading the wash around here. Use it up on this hand. And just take from a puddle where it's, I've done too much. Don't want a thick, thick, thick layer. Just want to shade it enough without doing too much. Um, that's sort of looking better. And then the handle fills in all the gaps for me there. And the sword, see the detail on the sword's been filled in. Looking good. And the back of the blade hit. <clears throat> not the full length for the blade, I'm not going to bother because that'll just be repainted silver later on. Um, but I'll just paint the rest of the detail, the gem, that charger on the sword and the gaps in between. And then that is looking nice. Right, next stage, you've done your washes and you're looking to uh, start on the, neat, the colours that you're going to neaten the figure with and uh, this next part is the most time consuming uh, but the most effective you're going to make the figure look really really nice really, really stand out uh, i'm going to show you how to do this turquoise armor it's really the main thing that people have been asking about so back to the turquoise again you've done your base color 
and then your shading has been nicely filled in for you by that wash all that work's been done and then I'm just going to show you a part of the figure you just go over it again uh, in the turquoise so we're going to paint these blobs on the armour and then running over the armour plate but not filling in the gaps see that I'm running around the shading there and the shading is not too intense that it looks too stark it just sort of fades out quite nice and then just running neatly around there and then all the way around and that looks nice and neat on the figure and immediately you can see that the design starts to stand out just using a detail brush and so you're keeping all the panels uh, the colour running up to the edges and then it's this leaving the shading in place and that's starting the process of enhancing the figure and so I'm just going to show you part of this leg again that paint has got to be kept a nice consistency if it's too thick you're going to really struggle to get that paint flowing around nicely and you're going to struggle with neatness half the battle is just keeping your paint in nice condition I've done part of that leg now see the gap here probably not even going to touch that going to keep it shaded maybe just paint a little bit of the front here and that will do some areas that are hard to reach with the brush don't worry about it leave them shaded uh, in the dark shade it's not agonizingly slow progress it just takes your time now you see where uh, there's a cluster of uh, lumps together, blobs on the leg together. I'm not really going to run the brush too far in. I'm just going to stop there and then just leave the shading to do its work and then just a little touch in the leg there and then just neaten there and you're just picking out the detail and running over the figure. But uh, you can see the difference, look, there's the unshaded uh, you can see the unshaded leg there and then turn it around and you can see the uh, the neatened side. You're just using that colour, keeping the consistency nice. Done the turquoise repair all the way around and you can see that has picked out all the detail quite nicely on the figure. Uh, it's neatened it up, it's made it neat, nice and neat and tidy. Uh, where all that wash uh, has been, has now been tidied up. So next stage I'm going to go back to this uh, leg here so that you can follow it along and then I'll apply it to the rest of the figure. I've done the two arms as well, just the same thing, just neatening up uh, where the turquoise was. So now you want to take your palette, this is where you do need a palette, um, and you want to take the turquoise, and this is your first highlight. I wouldn't say 50-50. Would say two thirds turquoise, if not three quarters turquoise. And uh, you can see there on the screen that's the kind of colour that you're after. It's certainly a shade up from the turquoise, but not too extreme. I'm just getting it down to a nice consistency. You just want a nice tip to the brush with the paint. And then, like a gem, I'm going to paint the top left hand side and then roll it around. She's so sort of making a like a shape of an inverted comma, like a. See it there on the, on the ball? I'm highlighting the top left hand side and then sweeping the highlight around. And I'm just going to do that on a few of these just to show you a blob in the corner and then run the brush around. And then you'll actually get pretty fast at doing those. So there's that aspect of the highlight and then there's also the edging and to do that you want a nice tip to the brush and then you just edge all the way around. Just running it around the edge of the armour and you'll see that highlight starts to lift each of those armor plates up and gives the whole thing 
a nice shape. I'm going to run it along the edge of the foot here. And then just the edge of the panelling. And it's the same for anything you paint. If it's a vehicle, then these would be the edges of the panels of the vehicle. Wherever there's an edge, just run it around. Doing the knee here, the knee joint, just above and below. And then just run it along there. So you can see, I'm just going to paint the top of the... There, and then just run underneath the kneecap. So there you go, you can see that highlighting, see the difference here, there it is on that side and then coming around, massive transformation, really uh, makes the shading look really good. You've got, you've got the base colour, you've got the shading now, you've got the repaired, neatened turquoise and then now you're picking out the details. And you can do as much or as little as you want, you can just flick on a few if you want to speed the process up, I just like to go over the whole thing and create that effect and I think it looks really nice, turquoise, lovely colour. So that's the colour you want to mix up. Uh, it's mainly turquoise and then some white in there just to give it a lift away from the base colour. And then I'm just going to apply that now across the whole of the figure. Right, so that's the uh, shading done, or the highlighting done, on the uh, Wraith blade there. I've just gone all the way around, just picking out all the edges. Some areas are faster than others. You see like on a sharp edge here, uh, you can run the brush with the paint, just run it along the edge and it highlights it for you. Instead of actually painting it, you're just running the brush, brush along the edge and that does fine. Uh, and then just picking out the detail. That's the most time consuming stage to the figure once that's done. Uh, you can breathe a sigh of relief, you're, you're well on your way to getting the figure done. As you can see it's starting to look really nice, really really picks out all that detail and it's detail that should be picked out because the sculpting on these figures is really nice now there's a final highlight and it really really brings the thing to life I would say you want to go for about 50-50 turquoise and white this is a final final highlight so mix it up next to the previous colour so you can see the difference uh, that looks pretty good, there's plenty of white in there and this is the final highlight. You're trying to pick out just the top left hand corner of a gem. Like that. Top left hand corner of the gem. So this is a smaller amount this time you're doing. It's an extreme highlight. So an extreme highlight would be, see across the back of the legs here. I'm just going to put a little bit at the top. There and there. And that will do. A little bit on the top here, just a little bit on the heel, a little bit on top of the um, block there, and then just a little bit on the back, just to, to highlight the top of the leg. Coming around wherever a corner is, so keeping your paint nice and fine. Wherever there's a corner meets, you see at the bottom of this foot here, there's a corner. Just there. I'm just going to put white on there. Top of the kneecap is a bend, so I'm just going to highlight the top of the kneecap. There's a little bend just there. I'm just going to highlight that and then just neat, make it neat there. There's a little bend here at the bottom. I'm just going to add some to that. Now you can see that has really lifted out uh, that highlight. So there's not as much to do on this one. Uh, so this one should be a bit quicker. Uh, so you can see, just top left hand corner, done, not going to touch any of that, top left hand corner, not as much to do, but again really brings that armour to life. Right, so uh, that's the final highlight done, you can see the extreme highlight just on the figure, and that has lifted uh, the armour out very very nice indeed. Uh, so you're Big, big stage of that figure is finished now. Um, it's looking nice. Turn the weapons as well, just the same thing. Just running over the armour. Uh, and then wherever there's an extreme highlight where a corner joins together or a little uh, gem 
on the figure, just adding that extra extreme highlight and that just lifts it uh, out just that extra amount. So we're going to move on to the next few colours now as we're looking to finish the figure off. Right, we're on the brass here and uh, I'm just mixing up the colour. So we take the original brass and then mix it with some silver to get a nice light sort of brass colour. Not too much silver that you actually lose the colour of the brass but light enough for a highlight. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use that to highlight the brassy areas. That looks good. I can uh, add a bit more silver to it. Nice colour. A little bit of water. It's just a nice brass colour. So you're just running the uh, bronze over the bronze that's already been done. So wherever that bronze is, or copper colour, see so just round on the head there, just run it across the top. It's really not that much to do. You're just re going over what's already been done. It's been shaded for you. And then you just going over the colour again to give a final highlight. So I'm just mixing up some more here. A fair bit of silver, it went quite bright. And you can see the, the crest there, I just skim over the top of those. And it just lifts them out nicely. And then just on top. And around the other side. So a lot of these other colours here are quite straightforward. Nothing much to them but quite effective still. That's your colours there, I picked that out quite nice. That looks good. Now I'm going to take some paint off, so I haven't got so much on there. And I'm just running over the uh, grill here on the head. Just re-highlighting it, being careful not to uh, get any paint anywhere else. But it just highlights that grill, just being careful. There we go, that looks good. And then uh, on the sword, there's a bit to do. You can see, just on the power pack charger there, and then just around the gem. Power cell. Just running the paint over the top, back and front, and just around the crest of the gem, it just frames it nicely. And then lastly, just not too much paint, just enough to highlight the ribbing on the handle of the sword. And that's it, and that lifts that out, and that looks nice. That's come out well. Right, then we'll paint the uh, gem here. The gems on the figure, might as well get them out of the way. So you've got this uh, red that you've been using, the old, um, it's the Wazdaka red, that's then been shaded with the blue. So that's quite nice and dark. And then you want to go on now with blood red. And it's, you want to paint the bottom right hand side. You want to lift that with the red and you want it to cover about two thirds of the gem in the red. So you're leaving the top left hand corner dark and untouched. Once that's dry you move on to the blazing orange and you then just touch that in the bottom right hand corner. See how that lifts that out and then just a final spot of white in the top left hand corner just sets off that gem and that gem now looks the part and that looks nice so that's the effect that you want pretty quick actually only small gems to do just a steady hand needed do the same on the sword so it's uh, bottom right fill it up with the red You want to do all the gems just so that they can, the red can dry before you apply the next layer. 
then uh, the orange in the bottom right hand corner just do that, spin the sword around do the other side I think it's pretty quick going showing you how fast you can get it doing it, bottom right hand corner then bottom right hand corner again just a little, such a little thing the gems but when they're done nicely they can really have a great effect, so just a dot for there, spin it around dot for that one, that's come up fine and then the same with this one one dot and then top left one dot there as well that's all your gems done, pretty quick stage but again another little effective technique that you can use right next is a key colour and that's the white uh, you're wanting to get this right, so you've got a, a base colour that's gone on it hasn't been disturbed and it's sort of a, a third of the way there so the next stage is to use a small brush and uh, before you use the larger brush just go around the details so you see the crest here I'm just wanting to pick out the detail here and be neat, so it's just a case similar to how you did the turquoise you're just going around the detail leaving enough of the shading visible running the white down in there to look something like that and just f just filling that area out you don't want the big brush to to disturb anything so that whole area there I'm just going to do and then underneath the crest any areas that you think the big brush uh, could make a mistake uh, just use a smaller brush to get it right quite a thick amount because I only want to do one layer here I'm going to get it right once and then just leave it and just underneath the the helmet there, the crest I'm just running along again neat job required you can see it up underneath the helmet nice and neatly tied it up there and then as far in as I can see or reach just tighten up underneath that one as well, that looks good um, I'm just going to do the other side here as well so there's a white two white blobs I'm just going to go around them just eliminate the shading that's not needed and then just leave uh, what remains it's nice to get this bit neat because the eye is drawn to that white helmet and the detail so I'm just making sure it looks good looks nice just neaten up with the brush in fact what I'm going to do is just use this small brush on the whole of this crest here so I'm using this brush on the whole of the crest so I'm just going to fill that out quite a thicker layer this time and brush strokes all in the same direction nice and neat and that should mean that I can finish that crest off keep an eye out for lumps in the paint, just eliminate those if you can fill it in and then get the brush going all in the same direction and that's that crest done really, I don't think I'll need to apply another layer to it you can if you want to but that's looking nice so then uh, you wash that out and go on to a larger brush got the base coat brush here and just going to take a nice amount of white and then just straight onto the helmet nice and neatly up to the edges got a little bit of paint on the turquoise there just using a brush to remove it all your edges have been under parts have been done so you're just free to fill in the larger panel uh, with the base coat brush and that's come on quite nice I'm trying to work the whole helmet whilst all the paint is wet so you're going to move quite quick and neatly just run right along the edge of the helmet there along along now there's some ghosty areas on here the key is not to panic I'm going to let that sit as it is 
because if I do too many strokes the paint will start to dry and you'll start tearing up the damp paint and it will make a mess. Smoothness is key so I've, I'm going to leave that at that stage. That, that is three quarters done. A little bit of ghosting on there. I'm just going to leave it and let it dry. I do not want to make the mistake of trying to apply another layer onto a, a drying layer of paint as you'll tear up the underneath and look horrible. Just going to go down to a smaller brush here, just a standard brush. Uh, it's just to do these crests. I'm just because there's not much shading on these, it's just a case of filling them in and using the size of the brush just to work onto that. There's a lump there, get rid of that. You get those little flecks, those little lumps as the paint gets older. Not much you can do about them. Um, so if you're fussing, you want nice clean finish here, then just start a new pot of paint uh, for this particular colour. And then just from behind, I'm just going to run over the white there. It looks good. And then just on the other side, all the mistakes, little flicks of black and turquoise are gone there. Um, I can now cover up. So you're just using the white paint, running it through, keeping the paint must be a nice consistency, not thick, but a nice consistency. And I'm just running a thicker layer on here, um, and that will just run that up. That side's finished. The other side's dried enough, so I'm just going to run the white again for the third and final time. Just to really bring out the white on these cloths to get it just from behind here. That's looking very nice. That helmet's dried. So once it's dried again, a uh, nice thick layer of paint over the top. I'm just moving fast, I don't want to keep going over it. I don't want to keep touching it, because that paint's still a little bit tacky underneath. So I'm just going around. And I'm just keeping my eye on the brush strokes, making sure there's not big, thick collections of paint. But it's all nice and even. And I think I'm quite happy with that. Looks good. So how it's come out quite smooth, just going to do a little bit on the crest again. One and two. And that will about do it. And that helmet's come out nice smooth white colour. Uh, but it's successive layers built up. Watching your brush strokes and watching out for any lumps and getting rid of them. Keeping the paint nice and smooth and you can get a nice clean white effect. And that Games Workshop white paint is a nice pigment of white. so. Uh, it works quite well. Really, this figure is almost finished. You've come on really well with it. Just the black to do. I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, we'll base and finish this figure off. Right, so uh, before we go on to the black, I've just got these swords to finish off. Remember at the stage they're at the arm. The arm's looking good. Uh, the gems are done. The highlighting here is done. So it's just the blade itself. Uh, there's a couple of things that I do. To it, the first is just to go over it again in the chainmail or uh, lead belcher as it's called now, and uh, just a nice consistency to the paint. I'm just using a uh, standard brush here, I'm just running over the blade and then over the detail here. Not too much paint there, so I don't run into the detail, and then just along the back. It's a little bit shaded there, so I'm going to leave some shading in. It's good. And then just on this side, I'm just running the paint along. So that neatens the sword and brings it back to its original base coat colour. And then I'll show you what I do next. All right, the next colour is the old mithril silver. And what I'm looking to do is just to make the cutting edge of the blade a different tone uh, to the rest of the blade. So I'm on mithril silver. It's the brightest silver. Uh, they do, and just using a standard brush, there's no need for 
too fine and then I'm just running up a neat edge along here just running up to the edge of the cutting blade and I'm, I'm just tilting it so that I can see in the light where my line is that I should go run it along now if I roll this you should be able to see there is an edge there and it can definitely be seen and I think it's quite effective uh, to do that and you can highlight other parts of the sword as well if you want but it's that cutting edge I like to get done so I just run the edge of the brush along there and that gives two tones I can see it quite clearly and um, that's quite effective it's the cutting blades you want them to stand out and be intimidating for the opponent so I just run that along the edge for the uh, for the two swords it's quite straightforward you don't have to do this it's maybe a bit fussy but I like to to add that finish in. If you want to make that cutting edge even more pronounced then instead of using chainmail as your base colour drop a shade and go under something like the old bolt gun metal and then when you go over that uh, the two tones will be even stronger. That's it, that's the uh, blade done there. This part here can be a brighter silver as well if you want. I might just run the brush along the tip there and there and that's looking good, I'm happy with that one little thing, one more thing you can do and that, that blade, you want it to look quite alien looking so I go back to the old wash uh, the old uh, Drakenhof nightshade and with a smaller brush go back to a detail brush here I just run some more of it into the cracks around the gem and around the sword because I want it to be and I can work a little bit into the beginning of the blade as well I want it to be a ghostly colour so a little bit of that extra blue in there running out the blade just a little bit it just adds that extra uh, eeriness to the shade of the sword so just a little bit of the blue and I can use it to enhance the patterns as well coming up on the sword just adds a little bit of enhancement and it can be quite helpful and then just use my finger just to smudge it in that's helped with the it has helped enrich the shading on the sword and bring out a bit more blue and that looks nice, that's come out well Right, the miniature's looking really good now, and it's virtually finished. Uh, white's done, it's come out nice, and the, you've got all the, the shading. The miniature, the base is ready to go. Uh, the gems are all done, the swords are done, we just finished those. So, to do the black, the thing is with black, when you highlight black, if you don't use too much grey, you can make a black object look grey. So you want to limit the amount of uh, grey that you do. So take the old Codex grey and then actually mix black with it to bring it down to a darker shade. About 50-50 will be fine and then it's nice and watered down and I use that just to run over the edges of the armour. And I'm actually angling the brush so it just runs along the edge of the armour. I'm not actually painting a straight line I'm actually letting the brush do the work and then uh, top left hand corner for any gems or uh, blobs whatever they are studs top left hand corner top left hand corner spin the model around top left hand corner top left hand corner done I'm going to keep this paint watered down it's not too noticeable it's great it's nice and dark it's intentional, you want a subtle highlight I mean if you're trying to save time you can almost leave the black entirely, it's up to you, but I do like to highlight it just running around, showing you how quick I can get it done just by painting an edge, running a brush along an edge is a whole lot quicker than painting a neat line, and it can be just as neat top left hand corner there, 
That shoulder's done, that shoulder's done, that one's done, that one's done. Just got to do the edge on this one. Just getting the brush at the right angle to do it. There and there. And then just coming in from on top. Looks good. And on top looks good there as well. A little bit more water. You've got the central one to do, so top left hand side for the two gems. And then we're gonna have to paint this one. So just run the brush along. And neatly bring the brush across there, it's come out well. And then along the top. And along the top. That looks nice. It just gives a nice crisp, clean edge to the figure and then for this crest here just any lines that stick out this whole rounded part again I'm just rolling the brush over the edge and uh, that's picking out that detail fine and then along the top here you can see I'm going to roll the brush along just run the brush at an angle and it picks out that highlight for me there, there and then here that looks good. And then here, one, two, three. And around the other side, one, two, three. And looking around, that's it for the black on there. Then just uh, over onto the swords. You've got the butt of the sword, I'll just roll the brush around, and that's that highlight done, and then a little bit on the end of the sword, just a bit of grey, and that's that highlighting done, so the sword's highlighted as well. I'll just do the other one, it's just the butt of the sword. Then your final highlight is, is instead of darkening down the grey, you're just using pure uh, Codex grey. And all you're doing is just picking out any extreme highlight. It's the same principle as the uh, turquoise armour. Just where any corners meet, the very top left hand corner of the uh, gem things and then any corners on the armour can be picked out and then, uh, top left hand corner top left hand corner for the gems there along the back just the top of the crest will do and then the top of the crest for this one just the uh, the final edging done with the grey just picked off uh, the corners of the black so the the colour is still black on the figure, but the greys help to emphasise and pick out the key details. Didn't take very long. Uh, you can paint the rib joints here if you want, but I haven't bothered. Um, and then just on the saw, just a little bit of highlighting on the butt again, on the tip, and that's finished those off. So that is it. That figure is finished. Really, if you have vehicles, you just now apply your transfers and stick those on. Right, in the final stage of the basing, um, is you've, uh, you've got your finished miniature, you're ready to go, almost ready to varnish so you're just taking your PVA glue, it's the same glue that you use to do the base and then for me this is urban terrain so I don't want much grass in here just want some so with an old brush I just blob on the glue just in rough patches just kind of skimming over the top of the little rocks little clusters and patches here and there uh, you put on as much or as little as you want if you made a, a mistake, you've dropped a bit of paint or something on the on the base. Uh, I'd sometimes I just don't bother trying to repair it. I just blow on some glue, and then that repairs the that just covers it up in grass. So you've got your yeah, your glue on the base there, and it's just a case of moving your flock over the top, and then uh, giving it a bit of a tap. Nice tap, save as much flock as you can, 
and then uh, you just blow off the excess. I blow off the excess and I just use my fingers, thumb, just to rub the spare flock away from the base. That's your basing done. Just patchy grass on there, you've got the shading and the colouring. Looks really nice. That green now adds a bit of a complementary colour to uh, the whole figure itself. So I'm happy with how that's come out. That's how you do the basing uh, for my 440,000 uh, figures. So the figure's done, it's based, it looks good. All I'm going to do now is just give it a coat of purity seal and then I can attach the arms. They'll go on, one and two. And there you have it, it's a finished Eldar Wraith Blade. It's like a mini Wraith Lord. I'm looking forward to using this unit. It's kind of really nice, you've got the lovely turquoise colour there. And uh, it's worth putting the effort in because that detail is picked out and uh, it just makes the whole figure look really nice but a sort of a medium speed technique this one uh, if you once you get through that highlighting stage for the armor then you're on a uh, it doesn't take too long to get the whole figure finished so that's how it's done uh, just go on my channel and check out the showcase videos for the Eldar pretty much every Eldar unit I've done is in a showcase video so you can see how this technique has been applied to my other Eldar units. And those showcase videos, they show you front, side, back and top views of those vehicles and units so you can see uh, where to apply that technique and how to paint each of those. So uh, you don't have to use this technique just for Eldar, you might like this colour scheme for something else. Um, might be a nice colour scheme for a Space Moon chapter even, it would look quite nice. But that's the technique, uh, it's quite straightforward and uh, just follow the uh, information I've given you and uh, there's no reason why you can't get results like that. But thanks for watching and uh, look out for more painting tutorials in the future.